Hello everyone. Since I've been six and a half hours on my shift now and I haven't had a call, I figured I'll give you a tour of my on-duty ambulance that I'm in this evening for the next 32 hours. Uh, right now we're in a 2008 Road Rescue sitting on an E450 chassis with a 6 liter power stroker. Uh, we are an ALS equipped ambulance providing advanced life support. So We'll give you a tour of what we have here. This is one of our newest trucks in our fleet. It serves us pretty well, it rides nice, goes down the road nice and straight. It has all the bells and whistles. Right in the front there, if you can see, whatever light we have. That's the electronic instrument cluster when you turn the ignition on. Gives you like the onboard diagnostics. With the, when you put the unit in reverse, that actually turns into a backup camera so you can see what's behind you. Uh, pretty neat feature. I'm not used to it in the new ambulances. Equipped with a VHF radio and a UHF radio. We use dual bands in our county. GPS to help us where we're going. Pretty standard. Keeps all of our gloves, maps, clipboards, miscellaneous stuff in the front here. There's our uh, road vest back there. There's some more vests in that blue bag right there. Alright. We'll go for a tour of the outside and then we'll go on the inside. Oops, I forgot to turn out the lights on the inside. Alright. I'll plug this thing in. Alright, first compartment here, that's our own board oxygen. We have a Reeve stretcher, which is pretty nice. They get some big people out or people out of hard to reach places where a stretcher won't go or a stair chair won't fit. Peed board. Fortunately, we don't have to use this that much, which is good. No one really likes dealing with pediatric patients. And hardboard splints. We got long ones and you can see down in there. With some short ones, I won't pull them all out pain in the butt to get them back in. So that's what we keep in that compartment. I'll put all that stuff back. Alright. Moving on to the next compartment. We do have a uh, CAD here. Whoever's familiar with the CAD, it's an extrication device that we'd use for like in a car. It basically keeps the whole spine and uh, head in order as you're extricating the patient out of the car. We do have some more uh, leg and arm splints in this compartment. Uh, safety helmets. And we'll just equipped with a toolbox with all the basic tools that are required per our council and uh, of course safety flares if we're the first ones on scene. Alright. This is one of the pass-through compartments here and I'll show you that stuff from the inside. It's our MCI kit, extra belts, uh, some more MCI triage stuff. A blanket there for the cold winter months, which it we're approaching very quickly. And a portable air child safety seat, again, which we don't have to use too often, which is good. And also a fire extinguisher mounted on the outside of the door is a stair chair, which again, very convenient tool. 
to get the bigger people out of there upstairs or in those hard, hard to reach locations. Has the tracks here which glides right down the stairs. So you're doing minimal lifting. Oops. All right. Okay, in this compartment, we have two blackboards. Also, that silver thing to the left there is a scoop stretcher. Not used very often, but when we do need it, it comes in handy. It's good for like hip fractures, so you don't really have to uh, teeter totter or tilt the pay, rock the patient back and forth. You can kind of keep them laying flat on their back, and this unscoop the stretcher, go around them, and pick them right up. Also, we we do have a uh, seat collar bag, which is down here. I don't know why that one's empty. I'll have to put that back together later. And CIDs, which are SID blocks, they attach on the either end of the backboard keeps the patient's heads uh, secure so it's not rocking back and forth and moving on this compartment dual batteries three batteries for the ones you can probably only see two from your vantage point and again another exterior apartment that goes through the inside. And A. This is our ALS trauma bag. It has extra fluids, uh, needles, syringes, everything we'd use on a trauma patient. Uh, we do have them tagged, so you really don't have to go back and check them all the time. We know that the bag's fully stocked and ready to go. It's our peed box. CPAP, intubation kit, an IO drill located in there. Whoever, like I said, whoever's familiar with an ALS ambulance, you are familiar with what all this stuff is. If anyone has questions more of what the stuff is, feel free to message me and I'll explain. All right. Our LS unit, we're running a, if you can see that, Medtronic's Life Pack 12 uh, heart monitor, automatic BP, pulse socks, does all the good stuff. You can do a 12 lead with this. Yeah, pretty efficient. Also, that box right there, that would be our, uh, that's basically our med box that has all of our uh, meds, drugs, and all of our other important stuff we use on the ambulance. That big blue thing right there, that's a new piece of equipment we put in service a couple months ago. It's called an auto pulse. What we basically can do is attach that to the patient and that will help us provide an efficient and steady CPR to the patient so it frees up actually a, a crew member. Yeah, pretty neat machine. Portable suction. Always handy. Lights, extra uh, blankets, gloves, and that's all the equipment I just showed you. All right, if I can get more lights. All right, in this cabinet. We have extra breathing supplies, nebulizer setups, oxygen, nasal, non rebreathers, pediatric adult, uh, soft hard uh, suction catheters, bag valve masks. Same thing in here. Looks like there's some bandages. Stethoscope. More intubation stuff. Ugh. 
thermometer. Again, more airway supplies. Intubation, various size intubation tubes. This compartment is various size, focus, various size blood pressure cuffs, stow water, more bigger cuffs. Okay, there we go. We have triangle bandages in the middle there, hot and cold packs to the left. Looks like some burn supplies to the right with some more bandages behind it. 4x4s, 2x2s, 6x8s, 12s. Uh, OB kits and trauma dressings underneath that. Some BSI stuff, mask, wipes, full BSI kits and uh, when people get sick. And, uh, more or less when people wet themselves so you can put those pads down. That's the kit I was showing you from the outside. That's our uh, state BSI kit that has more uh, collars and stuff in there. Collars. I'm sorry. Not collars. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Vest. Has the all different vests you use for um, MCIs, like transport officer, triage officer, incident commander, and so on. Right to the left of it, that little red pouch, if you can see, that has all the tags and paperwork and stuff like that. Well, that's our portable oxygen that we usually go in the house with. We have a blood pressure cuff in there, a stethoscope, one or two of each of oxygen supplies, like an honored breather and a nasal. Our stretcher with some blankets on it, ready to go. So this compartment. All right. This compartment we keep extra catheters, batteries for the monitor, blood tubes for draws. Over to the left here. Extra fluid. Again, more catheters. Drip setups. And so on. Pretty basic. Alright. Under this cabinet. Extra pillows, apparently. Looks like under here we have a two femur splints, pediatric and adult. They're actually called hair traction splints. They work pretty good. When you have a femur fracture, what they do actually, you attach it to the ankle and the leg, and it takes some pressure off the femur. There's another stethoscope. But release pressure on that femur fracture and an extra O2 cylinder. So that's how that's set up. Also, that blue box in the back there, that's where the ALS drugs are kept. That is double locked and the keys are usually with the medic and those items are checked every shift signed for and or it's only unlocked if those uh, drugs would be needed on a certain call and it'd be documented so that's how we keep track of that all right well that's pretty much it like I said pretty boring night decided to give everyone a tour if anyone has any questions or want to see more video, please feel free. If it wasn't so late or so dark, I would start this thing up and pull it out and show you all the whackers, the lights and everything, but I don't want to wake up my partner. So, Alright, everyone have a good night.
thanks for checking this video out. See ya.